Hi there and welcome to another video. About two or three weeks ago I put a video out looking at a three band end fed half wave for 40, 20 and 10. Uh, 20 metres was a ha full half wave, uh, 10 metres was a full wave and 40 was a loaded shortened half wave and a pretty decent sort of compromise antenna it is. One of the features or the issues we had with the antenna I should say uh, though was on 10 metres because as a, as a full wave didn't quite give you the kick you needed perhaps at low elevation angles. It's about three or four dB down, dBi down on a normal sort of half wave or quarter wave. Now the original antenna, if you remember, looked a bit like this. So here we have a 10 meter long wire fed the base with a high impedance transformer like a 49 or 56 to 1, about a 35 microhenry coil or something similar right at the very top of the antenna and then a short bit of wire above it about one or two meters long. So effectively what we had Below the coil for that first 10 metres of wire, there's your half wave for 20 metres and a full wave for 10, gives you a decent tune. And then the whole antenna length uh, from uh, the bottom right at the very top above the coil there uh, was a shortened half wave for 40 metres. So the biggest compromise actually we found wasn't exactly for 40 metres where, where you think it would be. It was actually for 10 metres as these figures uh, show us here. So we can see at 5 degrees elevation, uh, on 40 metres, we actually have about minus 7.8 dBi. 20 metres behaves basically what we think a, a halfway vertical would do for this ground mounted. 10 metres, though, we're minus 9 dBi. So we're about 3 to 4 dBi down, or what we'd expect it to be like, compared with a half wave or a quarter wave version. Now, a way we can improve 10 metres is to convert it into a half wave. I put a trap there for 10 metres, a coax trap or something similar. And uh, we can do that here looking at this diagram. And in fact, we can also, as you can see here, get 15 metres into the bargain as well. So what we could do is feed it with a high impedance transformer, a 49 or a 56 to 1. Uh, we then have somewhere around a half wavelength of wire going up to 10 metres, where we have the 10 metre trap, and about another metre of wire up to a trap for 15 metres. So you've now got, a two, you've now got 10 and 15 metres. And if you remember, about a week or so ago, I put out a video, maybe two weeks ago now, when we looked at a 10 and 15 metre uh, two band trapped end fed half wave with a, a bit of wire, 10 metres, uh, 10 metre trapped and a bit of wire going above again. And in fact, the, if we look back at this diagram, the, uh, the distance we have there, the, the, the measurements, in fact, are like to be slightly shorter than that. But what you do, you put up the half wave for 10 metres, put the trap there for 10 metres, uh, attach to that the top of that wire, trim the wire so you get a good tune for 10 metres, add another bit of wire, maybe a metre or two, and then put the 15 metre trap above that. And again, make sure 15 is OK. Double check 10 metres. And then above, going back to the diagram, going above the 15 metre trap, add another 3.2 metres of wire before you get to that 35 microhenry coil. Add that on, plus the coil, the wire and the coil, and then check 20 metres. So before you add the wire above the coil, you should have basically 20, 15 and 10. Now, modelling sort of recommends or suggests, I should say, you'd have around 8.9 metres of wire going up from the transformer through the traps up to the base of that coil. I think it'll be less than that because don't forget, modelling looks at uninsulated wire. Insulated wire will shorten the length and I think it'll be a bit less than that. So you need to experiment a bit, but these are sort of starting point measurements. So I think it'll be something like eight and a half metres, something like that, until we get to the base of that coil, maybe even less. So you put the 35 microhenry coil on or something similar and then about, as it says there, about 1.7 metres of wire above the coil. So the whole length of the antenna is about 10.65 metres. So as we can see, it's about a metre and a half, maybe 1.3, 1.4 metres shorter than the three band version because of the extra loading brought on. By the, uh, by the two traps for 10 and 15, which weren't there on the original version. And going back to some of the features of the antenna then, 10 metres now is a half wave rather than a full wave. 15 metres is a new band, so we've got a new band added, slightly shortened half wave. 20 metres is shortened from about 10 metres to 8.9 metres according to this. And the overall length of the antenna, as we say, is about just over 50% the size uh, of a full half wave for 40 metres which means it's going to be slightly more of a compromise on 40. But let's see what that does to 10 metres and how well 15 and 20 should perform as well. So looking at 10 metres, first of all, we've got the three band version, the original one in red and our new proposed four band version in black. 
And look at that, at five degrees elevation, we get basically a five dBi improvement using the new version on 10 meters because it's now a half wave rather than a full wave. You can see on the right hand side, look, in red there, you can see the original version. You can see how high the lobes are in that far field compared to now the, uh, the half wave version. So we've got much better gain at lower elevation angles. 15 meters, we can't compare that with the original because it wasn't, uh, we didn't have 15 meters, but we can compare the four band uh, new version with what, an end, what a, a full size half wave would be like on 15, ground fed, and, or fed at the ground level, I should say, and it's, a, well, it's within a dB, so it's not exactly a uh, disaster. 20 meters, again, we're within a dB. Uh, I suspect the loading provided by the two traps is probably just bringing 20 down a little bit, but he's still very, very sort of respectable there. 40 metres, we're a dB down from where we were, but minus 8.8, .8, still not terrible. We're about 3 dB, 3 dBi down of what we'd expect to see from a ground-mounted sort of quarter wave with a fair number of radials under it. So, overall, not a bad little antenna, this. Um, it reckons, modelling reckons, I should say, it'll be about 10.65 metres um, in total length. Um, I think it'll be a bit less than that. I think we might be even sneaking it down to around 10 metres. Now, can you imagine if you make one of these, and if it is able, if it's able to sneak onto a 10 metre pole, a uh, fibreglass pole, then happy days. And in fact, of course, what you can do, if you've got a 12 metre pole anyway, you can mount it a metre or two off the ground. And that'll sort of help the higher bands, especially 10 and 15, by getting away from the ground a bit more. So that'll be useful. But overall, four bands, no tuner, you will need probably be very choosy about where you operate on 40 because you won't get the whole band at 2 to 1 SWR less. Probably going to get a 50 or 60 kilohertz sort of spread, 2 to 1 spread. So you may need to tune it for 40 meters just to, to take out the edge off the, uh, uh, take the, the SWR off the band, band edges there. But overall, for the other bands, certainly you won't need a tuner. And I think this is a good option. Well, thanks for watching. 73, there'll be another video coming up over there and a chance to subscribe over there somewhere. Take care and uh, have a go and let me know how you get on with this antenna or something similar if you tried it. All the best. Bye bye for now.